The time is here for Christmas cheer, and in addition to a sack full of presents, you also have to make sure you have a table full of Christmas delights. And guess who is going to help you do that? Chef Gopinath from the Courtyard Marriott Hotel. Yes, he's going to guide us through a classic Christmas recipe. Christmas plum cake, guaranteed to add some rather tasty spirit to your festive season. Okay, here are the ingredients you'll need. First, mix brown sugar and butter until you get a paste-like consistency. One by one, mix in the eggs. In a separate bowl, combine the fruits, flour, baking powder, cocoa powder, and mixed spices. Then, combine the two batters and add cooking oil for a smoother texture. So now your plum cake mix is ready. In another bowl, mix butter and all-purpose flour and then coat the mold with this combination so the cake does not stick to the mold. Fill the mold with your mixture halfway to the top. With the oven set at 180 degrees, bake your cake for 60 minutes. Ideally, you should let your plum cake age for one week in a cool, dry place. Okay, well today we may be celebrating Christmas in Chennai, but you know, Cat Stevens had a point when he said, Oh baby, baby, it's a wild world. So how about we take a culinary journey across the universe and take a look at how the world celebrates Christmas with food. The Czech Republic celebrates with fried carp, potato salad and fish soup. While in Germany, roasted goose with cabbage, carrots and potatoes is the specialty. In Canada and the States, cookies and milk are often left out for dear Santa. A midnight snack to tide him over during his long, lonely journey of gift giving. If you're celebrating Christmas in Ghana, you'll be nibbling upon jollof rice. Rice prepared with tomatoes, cabbage, along with meat or fish. In Australia, milk and cookies and Christmas cake are left out for Santa, and sometimes even liquor. And here in little old Chennai, Tamil Nadu, let's see what I have on my Christmas plates before me. Well, it seems to be shaping up like a rather Canadian, American, British sort of Christmas. Turkey ham, roast chicken, prawns and risotto, beef wellington, and can't forget the stuffing. We would be running three very special buffets at uh, Courtyard. That is on the 24th evening for Christmas Eve the 25th that's Christmas brunch and uh, the 25th dinner that's uh, going to be very traditionally Christmassy dinner. We'll be having a, a poultry game, a ham, you know, maple roasted ham and uh, roasted turkey with cranberry sauce. And these are going to be, you know, the USPs for the Eve and the Christmas brunch. Now in case you didn't know this, hint hint, I have a weakness for maple syrup and the turkey ham here has been glazed with a maple syrup glaze. Now this would have been awesome on roast turkey, but it's delicious here nonetheless. So now you know what to do if you ever want to cook for me. Now I had to work off some of my meal before sampling the many Christmas desserts that awaited me. Some tree decorating ought to burn off a few calories, I thought to myself. Now while there are many versions of the origins of the legendary Christmas tree, it's said that Martin Luther was actually the first to start this custom of tree decorating back in 1500, when he set up a little fir tree indoors, decorating it with candles to honor Christ's birth. Worlds apart from Luther's little fir tree, the courtyard Marriott has erected an 18-foot crockenbush. Now, Crockenbush is a chocolate-filled boucher stuffed with Vienna cream. However, my question of whether one could nibble at this giant dessert tree was sadly met with an answer in the negative. Another Christmas custom, mistletoe. Now, this mysterious little plant has rather colorful origins embedded in Norse mythology. Gather round now, children, and let me tell you a Christmas story. 
When her son Baldur was born, Frigga, the Norse goddess, made all plants and objects promise not to harm little Baldur, forgetting to include, of course, the wee mistletoe plant. Noticing this, Loki, the cheeky Norse god, tricked another god into killing poor Baldur with a spear made from mistletoe, and as a result, the cold, unforgiving winter season set in. But luckily enough, the gods later resurrected Baldur, and his loving mother Frigga ordered that mistletoe shalt bring only love into the world, no longer death. From that day forth, any two people wandering under the mistletoe were to kiss, in honor of Baldur's resurrection. And lo and behold, we seem to be standing directly under the mistletoe. Well, we all know what that means. I returned to Muffin Tree, the coffee shop in the lobby, for a nip of something sweet. In the spirit of Christmas, Muffin Tree was offering various Christmas hampers, gift ideas for the season. Waiting for me was the little elves hamper and the couples hamper. It sort of felt like Christmas morning. Okay, so the little elves hamper, meant for little children, today for me. Maybe I'll sneak a cheeky nibble. This is really well wrapped, a little too well wrapped if you ask me. Ah, there we go. Mmm. Mmm. A white chocolate brownie. Lovely addition. The couple's hamper. Four bottles of wine and some exotic cheese. Nice. But who says you have to be in a couple to get a hamper like this? I would just get this for myself. Merry Christmas, me. Thanks, me. And the icing on the Christmas cake was my selection of Christmas desserts to end my festive journey. Christmas plum cake and eggnog with a cheeky dash of whiskey. To Christmas in Chennai. Well, I do appreciate you spending your Christmas with me, but Christmas is a time to share with your family and friends, so go on now. I hope the recipes that we've shared today will help add an extra sleigh bell to your ride through the holiday season and help to make your Christmas a very merry one indeed.